Hi guys, uh, I was asked if I would maybe be able to do a video on how I go about printing. Um, I'm going to try this and see if it works. I've had to move my camera and everything and um, I already filmed it once but you know it was just not a really good angle. So we'll try this again and see what happens. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so as you can see I'm, I'm on my Pinterest because that's where I do most of my downloading from. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and try and make this as easy as possible. And please forgive me if you already know some of this stuff. You know, it's not directed at anyone in particular. It's just, you know, overall, um, I just like to be help, helpful if I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open one of my boards, which is the vintage board. And all, you can see all of my pins. Now, um, when you want to save a pin... Because once it's here, it, it's just on Pinterest. You can't print right from here. You need to save it to your computer, okay? So let's save this one, for instance. What you have to do is you have to open up the pin. Don't open it up any further. And wait till it's fully downloaded, because you saw how it was blurred at first. Sorry, maybe I'm going to turn that just a little bit. It, if you saved it right away, it would save blurred. So you need to make sure that it is uh, fully loaded. Then what you do is you put your cursor on the image and you right click. Now I'm using a laptop. If you have a mouse, you just right click from your mouse. And you scroll down to where it says save image as. Then you left click. And this window will come up. Now what this is is your file on your computer. So it's going to save it to here. Now, in order to find it easily, I recommend that don't keep this, put your own name in it. So I just backspace to get rid of that, and then I start typing a name. So we're just going to call this birds, okay? And then you hit enter. And you see now it's, I don't know if you saw that, but it drops it right down here. So from there, you can open it up. So just click on that and it will open up your image. Now this is in Windows Live. Most people have this now. If you have Windows 7 or Windows 8, you're going to have something like this. So, and for all you Mac users, sorry I can't help you. <laughs> don't know anything at all about Macs. Uh, this is all I know and I am not a professional. So please, if you know that I've done something wrong, just leave a comment and tell me because, you know, I want to learn too. This is awkward trying to get at my laptop here. Okay, so what I do next is, let's see if I can show you that. You see up in the left, edit. Okay, so edit, organize, or share. So that's what I do is I take my little cursor. Where'd you go? I'm doing this left-handed, you guys, so please bear with me. And you open it up, and then it comes up to all the ones you've already saved on your computer. So I have all these images on my computer. The one that you saved, the current one that you saved, is always going to be on the bottom right here. And it's going to have an automatic check mark in the box. If you highlight the box, you see it's got a check mark in that. That means it's ready. If you want to just go ahead and print it, you can print it. But if you want to add other images, like say, say I want to add this image, I'll tick that. So now that has a check in the box. That has a Oh, check it again. If it doesn't, see now they both have a check mark. They should have a check mark. Where'd it go? Yep. Now I'm, I'm going to print these two images, and the reason I want both is because I don't want to waste my paper, and I don't want more than one of those bird images. If you want multiple of the same one, then just leave that checked, and you're going to do this. You're going to go up to your file, which is always the top left doesn't matter what program, it's always going to be in the top left, in my experience anyways. You click on it to open it up. Now you see I have all kinds of options here, but I want to print it. So I'm going to highlight the print, and then it gives me all my other options, which are order my prints, which I don't do, or print it. So go over to there and hit print. Now this window shows up for me. And again, it's in my pictures. This is part of um, my program that comes with my printer. 
So you can see here, it tells me what printer it is. You may have multiple printers, so you need to highlight the printer you want to use. Mine is wireless, so I don't need to have physically plug into any of my um, computers that I have. I don't have to move them around. It's wireless, and this one, as long as that's in the window, it's going to print from my printer. I always have the paper size set to letter. If you want to change your paper size, you can. If you're using smaller paper or photo paper, then what you're going to do over here, sorry, right here, it's going to give you a list of different papers to use. If you have a particular paper, like HP has their own paper. If I bought HP paper, that's what I would put in that window because it knows the saturation levels. So it knows how much ink to take to get the best picture. If you don't know it or, you know, you're just using regular standard paper, just put plain paper. I am using 28 pound copy paper and I bought mine at Staples. And it's a very nice, bright, white, smooth paper. And it takes an image really well but it's lightweight. I mean, it's heavier than most copy paper. It's the heaviest I believe that you can get in copy paper before you're stepping up into cardstock. Uh, so that's what I use. I always print on normal. I don't want to waste the, the higher the image, the more ink you're going to use. Normal is fine. If you've got a good printer, normal is fine. You don't need to go any more than that unless you're printing photos. That's a whole nother ball game. Okay. Anyways, I want this picture, but I don't want a full page. So I'm going to go down to this one. No, is it that one? Or is it this one? Wait a minute. It's this one. This is a four by six. So this is like a postcard size or a photo size. And I use a lot of postcards uh, in my junk journals. So this is a size that I like. And as soon as you click on that, because you've saved two images to be printed, it automatically will put them on there. Now the other thing you need to know is right here it'll say fit picture to frame. What that means is if you're saving a, a, an image and it's maybe not rectangular in shape, it might be a little bit on the square side. If you take this tick mark out, you see it will change the actual size of the print. This is what it was saved at. That's not what I want it to print at. So it's going to automatically stretch it for me. And that's how I get my photos. I only want one copy, so I'm going to go ahead and print. Now in your options, you can, you know, do a lot more to it. Um, but this is standard. This is just go ahead and print. So that's what I'm going to do. So it's now um, shot over to my printer. it's thinking about it. What it's really doing is uh, preparing the ink heads. And here it comes. Okay, so there you go. That's what printed out. Turned out great, hey? I love this. I'm happy with it. <clears throat> and I will definitely use this. Now, like I said, this is just copy paper. Now, the other program I want to show you is this one. If you want to do more manipulating. Now, this one is Craft Artist Compact. This is the free version that you can download from the internet. Just Google Craft Artist Compact, and you can download this. You can buy the program, I'm not paying that price because it is $39.99. That's UK dollars. Yeah, I'm not paying that. So I'm, I'm happy with just the free version. <clears throat> but there are similar programs out there that will do this if you want your own program. Say you want to add text boxes and, you know, do all that kind of manipulating. There are definitely programs out there. Um, I wouldn't go with Photoshop just unless you've got lots of money <laughs> and plan on doing all kinds of cool things. I don't have the time or the patience for that and I just want to print what I want to print. The reason I downloaded this is because you can do a little bit more manipulating. So what I've done 
um, this is I've already saved this so what I'm going to do is just get out of it and whoops and go um, to the beginning so let's start with going up to file and hit new and I'm gonna start from new craft project and I don't want the startup wizard because I don't really care although let's do it for your sake so we start here this is what will happen when you open it up this is what it'll look like this window here I always choose blank project and then it gives you all kinds of different layouts that you can choose I always do this one um, because that's the size of my paper eight and a half by eleven so you click on that and then you go down to OK and then this will come up now you can insert these I don't want them so I just exit out here now I've started with a blank canvas so then I'm gonna go over to the top left I hope you can see this maybe you can't hang on there we go I think you can see that now okay you go into insert photo from your file because they're on your computer you have saved them and then I can choose this one and open that and now <laughs> if you could see what I'm doing here you guys you'd laugh um, I have my son calls them t-rex arms they're very short <laughs> and yeah okay so as soon as you click anywhere on the page your image will drop so let's move the image so you can now see it and it it drops at a certain size so oh good grief see this is hang on really difficult doing one-handed here I'm gonna move that again okay I want to drop it right into the corner and I want to move my page up so you guys can see it there we go now you'll notice there's a ruler here and there's a ruler on the left I don't know if you can see that there there's a ruler on the left here if you know specifically the size that you want it to be you can do that so it is already at five and a half which is what I want and I want it seven now it's a little bit longer than seven inches so I'm gonna shorten it a little all you do is go down to the box at the bottom there put your cursor on it see now it's got an arrow up and down that means you can move it so you just hold the left button down on your mouse and then move it until you get the size you want see so see that black ruler on the left see that's moving so now I'm gonna drop it onto seven now it's seven inches long now I don't want to waste my page because this is just a introductory thing if you had like a full program you could you could copy and paste it and have two of the same images if you want it doesn't have that option in you know just your basic um, program sorry I'm having a brain fart anyway I want another image I don't want the same image so what I'm gonna do is click off so that the blue around it disappears I'm gonna go back up into insert to my photos from my file and I'm gonna choose another image so let's choose the butterfly and we're gonna open that now see he's on can see that little square there pictures not there yet but what that's allowing you to do is just move it so I'm gonna butt it right up to here and click and then it opens up then I'm gonna do the same thing I'm going to use my ruler up here and I'm gonna move him till he says five and then I'm gonna shorten it till it says seven you see on the left or the, sorry the right hand side the inches come up so you can actually do it that way you don't have to do it by eye or guesswork so you see it's changing size there okay I'm gonna stretch it just a little bit more close enough okay so now I have two inch two images this one is actually the wrong size see it now says five and a half I don't want that I'm gonna click back on this image and I'm gonna shorten it or make it skinny <laughs> and then I'm gonna move this guy over and he's on the five so now they're both five by seven and I'm happy with that if you're happy with that and you think 
possibly you would use it again, you can save it over in the corner here. You hit this button to save. It'll come up with a window, you name it, and then it's saved in this program. So the next time you want to use it, you just find it and open it up. So we're going to print this because I want to show you this next step. You go up into File, and you go down to Print. Now this window comes up. Okay, so it's recognized my printer. It tells me I have one document, two on the sheet, so it tells you that. You're going to print it in as in document, so that means you're going to print it like it looks right there. If you don't want to change anything else, you're good to go. Say you want to shrink it to the paper size. Click on that and it'll it'll change that. Best fit can't do it because it won't fit according to that. It does, but it says it doesn't because there's actually two images there and it's it's saying one image fit to size, second image fit to size. Well, you can't do it if it's on the same page. So you can do maybe scale to size, but I always use this one because I've already manipulated it. So that's my document. I can print it that size. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and print and see what happens. I really like that bird. I think he's pretty. I'm going to print them out in this size again, and I'm going to use the um, cardstock from... Because mine's a front load, I'll show you the printer. I don't know if you can see it. There it is there. So mine is a front load, which means you pull the drawer out and you feed it. So I pull out my paper when I want to use cardstock. I don't use anything heavier than a 60 pound and I put one sheet in at a time so it won't jam and then you can print right on cardstock. Okay, so here's here's my image all printed out. That looks really great. So that you could use right on the front cover of a journal. Just cut them in half if you want. The cool thing is if I wanted, say I wanted to use them as pages in my journals I can move this and leave a little bit of a space, you know, where you would sew it in. So it gives you that extra little space. You can do that. And uh, then what I do is I have another program that will print like a journal page. So I put two on the page, put this back in my printer, and then it will take it and print on the back side of it. And then I have a full page you know, that's covered. It's not white on the one side. Or you can coffee or tea dye the back of your paper and gives it a nice aged vintage look. So hopefully that's going to be helpful for you guys. If you have any more questions, uh, please feel free to leave a comment. And like I said, I'm no professional. This is just how I do it. And, you know, hopefully that helps you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.